dobrze. Hi everybody, uh, this is Bernard again and uh, welcome back to uh, True Logic DX. I'm seeing that we've got some uh, new faces and new people uh, and some people that were here that joined us on the, on the first session. Thank you for uh, investing the time again and joining us on this conversation. Up today, we're talking about the concept of uh, digital transformation and uh, I know that it's been a buzzword for a while. We found that the best way to explain it and to dispel what it is and what it isn't 
is to speak firsthand with the person that's been through it and brought a big brand through it. And it's always exciting for me when brands move to digital because I've been a netizen for over 20 or so for, for over 20 years, so about over two decades. And I've been waiting for the country to leverage the power of the internet for a long time. So as always, these are conversations. So what you put in will determine the value that you get out of it. I strongly encourage you guys to participate. There is a chat box. We will leave the last 10 to 15 minutes of the session uh, to, to address all of your questions. If you have the ability to enable your cameras, I encourage you to do so to make it more personal. Uh, you can drop your questions at any point in time. Um, we'll treat the chat box like a parking lot. So to get us started, it's precisely 199 days since we we all began to shelter in place and since we began quarantining. And some businesses were fortunate enough to manage their transition to digital before then, some of them right on time, and then some of them are realizing that they need us now. Uh, briefly and very briefly, the, 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 in the current situation we're in, we're seeing banking become more aggressive, uh, shopping and yes, working from home, uh, or we're all banking, shopping and working from home now. You're seeing more aggressive moves from brands to support SMBs. Uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you're seeing ads from brands like Visa and BDO. If you thought Lazada, Shopee were ubiquitous before we locked down, we hadn't seen anything yet. Uh, and channels like Watson's, Beauty Manila, and other brands have also made big strides in digital, especially in the in the past 200 minus one days. Bottom line, our customers are online. Our, are the, the people that are our lifeblood are online, and that's where we need to be. Personally, one of my favorite parts of these conversations is I get to invite people that have large, colorful careers, and it's as much a learning experience for me as it is for you. So no point in suspense because I've been posting it on LinkedIn and the company's been sending out newsletters. So you guys know who my guest is. We're lucky to be joined by LBC CMO, Javi Mantecon, who's been generous enough to tell us the, to tell us the story of LBC's digital transformation. So let's all learn together from Javi. Javi, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. It, it, was, it was our pleasure. Uh, I think the experience LBC went through is a learning experience for a lot of brands, big or small. So I'll, I'll get into the meat of the topic like almost immediately uh, and, talk, and begin the conversation about digital transformation as a big buzzword, right? In, in my experience, I see people tend to underestimate it or overestimate it. And when they, when they underestimate it, you know, they they wind up overspending more than they, they wind up paying more than what they bargained for. And when they overestimate it, they just stop in their tracks. For you guys, when you were deciding to digitize LBC, what was the concept to you guys in a nutshell? Well, I'll, I'll take it a little step back, right? LBC is 70 years in the business. Transforming every so often is not new, right? We started with mm -hmm. paper, we went to typewriter, we went to computers, and now this is like a, a second or third generation type of uh, transformation that we need to go through. Um, it's a mix of a customer and from the top management uh, mm -hmm. this And we started it maybe just a bit, three and a half years ago. We started our digital transformation then. But it was a mix between what the customers now are wanting and expecting and what the organization can deliver for them. Okay. Did you guys break it down into, into silos, into core parts? Like, was was there a transformation for for marketing? And then was there a transformation for people on the ground? Or, yeah. or did it just have to be like one big thing that just washed over the entire organization? No, no, no. I, I would suggest for big, big organizations like ourselves, you can't do one big scoop. Uh, right. across all, all the facets of the operation. So, so, so how did you guys break it down? Because if you, got, if you began three and a half years ago, who, what was the first most important thing? Like, where was it important to initiate the transformation in? Yeah, so about yeah, three and a half years ago, the first department that transformed was HR, actually. Mm -hmm. so HR for self-servicing, people, 
I mean, we're LBC with 1,000 plus 500 branches all over the Philippines. So that was one core unit. It's like mm -hmm. a, a little silo in its own, right? HR, all the requirements, yeah. all the login, leaves, rostering of the people and all of that. We started there and then we moved to operations right away from, from oh, HR right. to the operations, which is the meat of our service, right? right. So we moved to the, to the hubs, to our teams, to handheld devices, uh, to be able to gather data faster, quicker, as information okay. of information pushed to our customers was one of the vital insights that we needed to, to do. Okay. And marketing, marketing came in on what, on what year? Like marketing you came in soon after, year. maybe about almost three years or two and a half years now, marketing mm -hmm. came in. Because again, as another silo, I can market, and we did, we moved from the uh, traditional, we moved to digital. Then you start realizing, oh, my web page is not set up, right? It's easy to put the ads yeah. on. And then you're like, oh, uh, my website is not optimized. It doesn't have all the content. They're not tagged yeah. properly. Then you're looking at the analytics from that. So that's, we started moving down from there, from the ads all the way down to the website, the support, you know, going down there. So it, it was a pivot from internal HR operations and then marketing now. Because mm -hmm. the consumers were all there, right? Right. So... When, when the conversations were beginning three and a half years ago, uh, so I, I think the first thing is, was it important to have to have conversations with, with top management? And then were, were there challenges there? Did you encounter resistance at the top management level? Um, not really. The senior, senior management was the one recommending and really pushing that, you know, it's time for us to go. When we, mm -hmm. went, uh, when we went to the executive, to the XCOM, Fortunately, our ex in LBC are also young people, right? Yeah. So it was not a matter of convincing. It was more of a matter of, okay, how are we going to execute it well? Right. What so we when, 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 when you had their buy-in, who needed to become part of the conversation then? Uh, right after, you have to go down to the managers. The managers and all the functional have to own it. Mm -hmm. This is something that uh, you can't take away, right? You can't run it from the top. It's got to right. come to the middle management. The middle managers have to own it, and they will be the one to make sure it's getting executed down to the staff. We right. invested a lot in cascading. We had cascades. We had a lot of uh, top uh, speakers. You know, we had uh, Coach Chop, motivational speakers, talking about change, because we needed the people to understand, again, why we're doing this. Right. The importance of understanding what is it going to do for them and to our organization. Which section did you find most challenging? Like like getting the transformation done, getting the making sure that the that the transformation or, or the change was being executed consistently. It's it's always down to the final user, right? So the mm -hmm. actual users, you know, our frontline staff uh, and the and the couriers entering the data. That was the biggest challenge, getting the proper data in, garbage mm -hmm. in, garbage out, right? So to speak. Yeah, yeah. So we have to make them understand that why are you putting the numbers? Why are we getting the address? Because the SMS support and the email, everything will dig into what you've entered to. Right. And that's where the biggest challenge. The system is easy to buy. Any system you yeah. can buy. But to make use of it and to maximize it, it's now what goes inside that uh, those platforms that can really transform right. your company. Right, and digital is, is a double-edged sword because if people execute it well, you, you manage to do a lot of things better, but if the data that you receive is not accurate, if the, way, if the, people are not, if the system runs the business and the people don't use the system correctly, then you're, you're not, you wind up not measuring the right things. Did, did partners and vendors have to participate in the buy-in conversation, in the transformation conversation? Uh, definitely. Uh, again, you know, our business is in the logistics. We know what we do. Now, when it comes to the platform and how the platform can uh, transform our organization, we have a visual, but we need them to be able to also take us through that journey to make sure it's being, it's being done, done right. 
Right. So we need their their expertise in how we push to the the stakeholders, right? Yeah. So one of the things you mentioned was that you know LBC is seventy years old, and you and you guys did a lot of changes from manual Bundy clocks to things on paper to typewriters to going on computers, and then eventually being digital. What's the inertia for for that kind of change? Is it the competitive landscape in the market? Is it your is it customers asking for that, or is LBC just always getting a competitive lay of the land? And then are you guys just changing? Believing that your customers will follow you, or do you let the customers lead the change and then you follow in the direction they go? Well, there's, there's, a, it's a mix, right? So being in a third world country, we're lucky. We have like a crystal ball, right? We just watch yeah. the first world, we see <laughs> what's happening there, and then you can now nitpick, That's true. right? You can now nitpick and say, oh, that one, I bring it in now. It's too expensive. Let's wait. But the consumers are also moving, so. You have the factors of your consumers getting younger, going into these um, new platforms. They expect when they put the package now, the first, after two minutes, they're tracking it. They're like, mm-hmm. in my office. Well, I mean, it hasn't moved yet, right? Yeah. And then, and then you have LBC being the, the leader. So yeah. we have to always push ourselves to the next level. And so you have those three components that we have to work harmoniously. And timing mm-hmm. is obviously also very critical if you're the one of the first mover you also pay the more expensive you're the learning you're yeah. all of that. so that's that's why i said it's, it's it's a way for us to see there's things out there oh that one we can bring in this one we can do and then fit it to how the organization can execute but but in most situations i think lbc did take first mover in in a lot of cases right um uh, and, and and I think it it has to do with the fact that it's already that it easily made itself a large established business and and whatnot. So if if you were giving advice to a smaller business, uh, how would they know the right timing to to be to to say that okay, it's time for a change. It's time to it's time to lead a charge. I don't want to do the trial and error and experiment and be the one that gets it wrong. But then how do they know that it's becoming too late? Like what's the right way to read the market and say, yes, now's the time to read the change. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good question, but if you are really running your business, you would really know, you know, mm-hmm. there are a point of, I can't keep doing this. I can't scale. I want to yeah. get more productivity. I want to be able to do a better customer experience and, you realize the way you're doing it manually or mixed is not enough, mm-hmm. right? So once right. you get those questions coming in all the time, I think then you realize it's time for me to make this transformation. Yeah, and th- and how much of that how much of that transformation had to be done with captive talent, like people that you have in house, and how much of that had you, where you ha- had to find the right partners, where you had to find the right vendors. With, with LBC, we stick, our, our internal talent is really core to our business. Mm-hmm. Everything else, we work with partners. Uh, okay. And, and the partners are there to keep uh, up with the times. They'll always mm-hmm. reinvent, have updates, and keep that, which is hard to do for some organizations. It's not like for us, we've made that decision that we won't be building in all these talents and then have to do it ourselves when mm-hmm. we can work with the partners and keep the core for our operational uh, requirements. Is that the whole point of, of finding partners versus having captive talent? It should be able to focus on the core of the business? For us, that's that's how we that's how we carved it out. Okay. And what were some of the criteria that you guys had when it comes to selecting partners? Because even now when we work with you guys, we, we meet your other partners, right? Uh, and we all sit down. Well, we all used to sit down <laughs> in a room together. <laughs> uh, but we get to meet them and we, we, we make sure that we're all aligned towards the same goals. But one of the things that I always wonder about is, oh, okay, so I understand the selection process that went into, into working with True Logic. I wonder what the selection process was for working with the other partners that, we, that we've gotten to meet in LBC's offices. So when you guys were picking up the right partners, what were the criteria for finding the right ones? Well, each each department have their 
case study, so to speak, right? They have the business mm-hmm. case, these are the challenges, and then we we pull it out to several partners, and then we now start evaluating from their technology standpoint, their vision, on how do they look at it, two, three. So it's not just about the here and now, mm-hmm. it's also about how is it going to look like two, three years down the road? Will this company still be there and be pushing innovation on their side? Because that's why mm-hmm. we want to partner with you and not have it with us. Is they have to keep reinventing themselves also. Right. So we look at those things. And then obviously the final is some of the financial terms and benefits that we can both get. But it's not led by just the cost. Right. It's not the cheapest guy wins. It doesn't yeah. work, work that way. And even when you guys were making the selection process, I didn't even understand that that was part of what you were looking at, right? Like which company is innovating, which one is changing, which one is is researching. It, it's very interesting to to hear that, uh, especially retrospectively. And uh, also because we had some conversations like with Itamar, you yeah. know, those personal conversations with the co-founders, owners, you know, the top, are what's important when you're selecting and working with. Mm-hmm. That's where you see it's not an explicit question saying, how are you going to be three years ago? In your conversations, yeah. you'll start hearing and saying, oh, wow, these guys are already, you know, you know, way past the ABCs, right? Yeah. We think, so we're, we're just starting ABC, you're already thinking BEF. Yeah. And then that, but that's where the continuous improvements and enhancements come along. So in terms of what's been achieved, and, and I'll focus on the marketing side because it's a, it's a marketing conversation. On the digital marketing side, I think a lot of people see progress, but they don't know when they should be happy with the results. So take, for example, for, for you guys at LBC, how happy are you with the, with the direction the marketing is going, with the visibility of the brand, especially now online? Um, and then I'm going to ask, what metrics do you look at that determine, that determine your sentimentality or your feelings towards those results, right? But, but let's say if you took a look at the results that LBC has achieved so far, how happy are you with them? We're extremely happy. Uh, you know, and I think also the pandemic has pushed a lot to force the ones who are not sure of going online, move online. Yeah. Uh, so we've seen numbers that uh, growth in, the, in online. Uh, we've launched several online services uh, during the pandemic, you know, pick up processing. Yeah remittance, all of these things there. And we've seen so much growth in, in that, that touch point that we were not even projecting to have at this stage yet. Yeah. I, I did want to talk more about that because, because that is, I think, super relevant to the people that are that are in the audience where LBC is actually paying attention to the needs of Filipino online entrepreneurs, of Filipino online sellers. And I know that you guys have a have a have a program for that. Would you like to tell everybody here what that's about and how they can be part of it if they fit the bill? Yeah, well, we're we're launching SoShop, uh, which is really our our platform for social sellers and micro SMEs, right? So it's it's your online touch point. You can process, batch, upload. You have your own dashboard. Uh, a lot of a lot of functionalities that you can do, perhaps drop off, you can have it picked up in your house, you can do COD, COP, have the money collected or not, the full value, the freight. You know, we, we basically chopped up the service and said, here's a program platform for you guys, and that we will now support it there with webinars like this and others, educational tips, uh, you get rebates, you get uh, plowbacks. For the for the each company that works with us on that platform, and and I think the 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 easiest value proposition there is the convenience, like the fact that you don't have to deal with logistics on your own, you don't have to deal with tracking on your own, you don't have to deal with collections on your own because it sort of all puts that under one roof. And yeah, that's I mean that that platform, like I said, is as robust as how you want to use like any other transformation or any other tool you can buy a smartphone and only use it for call and text or you can maximize the power of your smartphone the platform is there the same and we now want that we want to be able to educate the smes and social sellers that hey there is this tool and there's a lot more to be able to, to be able to achieve for them 
with a partner behind LBC that opens up your market nationwide and worldwide. Yeah. How and, did you guys treat that as a pivot because we got locked down, or was it already was it already a need in the market that you guys had identified a while back? No, we we've, we've always known we're the biggest. Uh, widest reach here in the Philippines, right? We 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 cover Aparito uh, Olo. It was just what value proposition did that give customers? Mm-hmm. So it, when as we started going why 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 why, we start realizing hey because they want to sell and they want to yeah. open. So you're not now just limited to my network of friends, my influencers here. Because if somebody wants to order and take it from Baguio, hey. I'm the right partner for you. And right. you can now think of your own store and market anywhere in the Philippines because we have the capabilities to get it there and get your money. So so I think some of the brands, like especially even under the current situation, no, what, what they struggle with is is finding this, like where's the need and how do I fill that need? For you guys, how did you discover that this was a great target audience, that this that these were a group of people that you guys could add value to their business, that you guys could help? Like, how, what was the process for for figuring out social sellers, online merchants, entrepreneuring Filipinos, they're, they're the right market for LBC to talk to? It's, again, it boils down to data, right? You look at mm-hmm. your transactions, you look at your customers, and you realize 20, 30% of them are giving you 70% of your revenue. Mm-hmm. Then you go further, who are they? What are their profiles? And then you start looking and saying, wow, that's there on this side. These guys are entrepreneurs pushing their service. And we, that's where we said, this is the value we can offer you. We're not just a logistics. Logistics, yeah. uh, basically, switch your, switch, cost to switch in logistics is easy. You can go on your phone now and use anybody else and all of that for a certain thing. But what yeah. value proposition can I give that's different from everybody else? Mm-hmm. So in my environment, in my community, I have buyers and sellers. They're already with me. Right. Now you're a seller, you're a buyer. You're a buyer, yeah, I have sellers. Let's make it all right. right. And, and I think that's why SoShop is built more like a community, right? It's not just it's not just a product, it's not just a service that's out there for anybody that wants that wants to use it. It's being built like a community. So, so that it becomes it becomes more, or it becomes exponentially more powerful that way. Uh, so, I'll go back to the broader topic of of, trans, of digital transformation. Uh, LBC is not alone in in the vertical that that you guys compete in. There are a lot of logistics companies. There are actually a lot more that are springing up, like from the woodwork, right? Uh, and for the people that are that are attending, I am certain that they are in verticals where they have competition, but I think LBC is in a good fighting position relative to the people that you directly compete with, uh, simply because most of the transformation was there before before we got locked down and, the, and you know, the direction of the business and the plan and the metrics were determined before March 16, which is, yeah. which is terrific. But there are brands that are thinking, oh, is it right for me? Should I invest in it? But regardless of the vertical, what do you think a brand or a business is risking by ignoring going digital, like especially now? It's the unknown. You know, what they're risking is a whole mm. pot of gold right up outside with the horizon of what they can't see. Because everybody is there. Everybody is online. The, I mean, you talk to Facebook, you talk to Google, you talk to all the channels. Their numbers are way up there. Zoom and all these platforms, everybody is there. You can now actually communicate to them, reach out to them in a more effective manner than what you would have had prior. Yeah. With the old ways of trying to think, this is what I would have done, I would have done this. They just got to break the chains and look at the, the, the pillars that they want to really get into and, and focus. And you'll see restaurants doing it. You yeah. Know? All of a sudden, they're pivoting, they put this, you can order, you can do frozen, you know, before, you yeah. know, now you can eat their food. So everybody's pivoting. So the smarter ones and the ones who are dedicated and really thinking are making the pivots. So are not competing it. But, but when you guys transformed, you, you guys began, so the transformation began with HR. I think it's because that's the most repetitive task uh, and it's pretty standardized in every business, right? Everybody 
Bundy's times in clocks out OT is paid the same way but essentially for you guys as a business you started with your core competency like you guys started in operations and logistics and the people at the at the centers uh, but is that do you is that prescriptive like you would always advise that when a business digitizes do they always begin in operations or or are there it depends scenarios yeah you, know, it, you can you can take silos out like, like i said you can take marketing you don't need to fix your did, uh, did digitally transform your operations so long as you can still take the volumes and do what you need to do and provide the service you can already take your marketing out so there are silos that can get bolted in and and that's what we did with lbc you know we had all the the senior management with their own division saying this is how i can transform this is how we can transform and you look now at what's the kpi that you want to be able to achieve right and in our case it was it was really being able to scale how do we get lbc and be able to scale this for like double the volume and yeah, that's why we okay. focus on operations Okay, that, that's terrific, right? Like the fact that you guys knew we're doing this because we want to we want to double our volumes, uh, and and so for you guys, you started with the operational pillar, and then all the pillars, all the pillars eventually followed suit. Uh, so we're locked down. It's been you know one day to two hundred days. Uh, and, and when you're online, are you observing any brands that have been making a pivot that you think are doing really well? You know, other than LBC, like, are there other brands that you're seeing like, wow, okay, wait, I've not seen that before. That's a good approach. Oh, wow, wait, I've not seen that. That's a good approach. There are, are there any brands that have caught your attention? There are, um, you know, in our field and outside our field, the smaller, the smaller uh, players and are very agile, right? So unlike mm -hmm. us, you know, you know, we're a big aircraft carrier. It's it's pretty hard to to make a U turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we see certain things, bits and pieces from from some of the smaller players. Hey, that would be a nice one. How could we try to incorporate that into what we have? Does it fit? So it's not always hey, let's just copy because they have it, right? It has yeah. to fit. Where does it fit in our entire uh, proposition, and is it worth it? Right. And, and, and so that's where the metrics come in, right, Javi? So, yeah. so think, for example, for the people that are here that may not be transforming or are, are actually getting started. Like, think for, for example, for operations, what key metrics did you guys measure to say, okay, this is headed in the right direction? Or for you guys to say, okay, wait, we're not headed in the right direction? Because I think the data feeds back into whether you're doing it correctly or not, right? So if we, if we broke it down into silos, or for let's say for operations, what what key metrics did you guys look at to say okay that's progress or no that's not progress? So there there's there's several for our industry right it's it's the rider productivity right mm -hmm. so when he goes out how many can he do? Then the second one goes is how many can he make sure he fulfills because you can take out a thousand pieces and then mm -hmm. come back with nine hundred still useless right? Yeah. So you have to be able to how many did he come in? How many did he leave? How many did he fulfill? What route did he take to be able to make sure that he can optimize his route better? Uh, mm -hmm. and make sure that at the end of the day, everything he took out is released. So right. that fulfillment rate and what we call you know return to sender or the returns is another number that we try to look and keep down. And that's where we see that. Okay, with all the tools that we provided and the transformation, what has happened before and after? You always have to have a baseline. Don't do right. transformation without having a baseline pillar number. Oh, it that's terrific. Right. Yeah. It might be right, it might be wrong, doesn't matter. It's your baseline, and you can just take it from there and see forward if you've done better or worse. But you have to have a baseline. Right. And, and, and I think that's, a, that's terrific, right? Because I think there are some people that will invest money thinking, oh, okay, so I attended this seminar. They said it was a great idea. I'll invest in AdWords. I'll invest in SEO. I'll invest in you know, a website that costs, I don't know, $10,000, half a million pesos. And then when we look at it, we go like, why? <laughs> uh, and you're right. I think it needs to be motivated by a baseline figure that you want to move. Um, and it's interesting that, the, that the, key, the key metrics that you were talking about in operations, in logistics were rider productivity, fulfillment rate, but going all the way to route optimization, 
uh, actually does tell you when you guys are, are progressing. On the marketing side, what metrics were you guys looking at to say, okay, we're headed in the right direction or okay, stop, our message is not getting heard, we're not talking to the right people? Well, so when we made the payment online, everything now goes into the website, right? So yeah. we start the basics, where's the page rankings, where are we for all of the search, what's our volume coming in, the sessions, the page views, are they you know, searching other things inside yeah. LBC? And then you go down to the, did they sign up? Did they fulfill the, all mm -hmm. the full transactions? So you have now the conversions and everything right. inside there. So there's, there's several metrics that, yes, I put my ad, I can get the reach and I see that they're coming in, but are, is it now returning certain investments, which is now the sale? I need the booking yeah. at the end of the day, right? That's yeah. my sale. So you can all be in my site, but if you didn't do anything, eh, I am a yeah. big brochure. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they always say, no, no, re, no retrospective is always twenty twenty, um, And so I would assume that it, I think LBC would have encountered some challenges when you guys were doing, when you guys were doing your, your digital transformation. And I think regardless of the size, I, I don't think you can ever be too big for transformation to ever be frictionless, because if it was, it wouldn't feel rewarding when you actually get it done. And um, I, let me say, we not transform yet. We're still yeah. transforming. It's not the past right. things. These are yeah. things happening now. It's not like LBC, oh, you've transformed. No, no, no. We are in the middle of the tra in tra transformation. Yeah. We gave it a five-year period. So we're yeah. three and a half years now. We did not say, oh, we're going to do this and in six months, we're all good. Yeah. Right? This is a five-year transition. Yeah. Plan. It's carefully calculated. Resources, like I said, you can't go with 50 transformations all at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's also important that you break it down a into pillars. You break it down into periods because uh, you're right. You you can't just do a sweeping change and then pray that everybody gets it or that everybody will do it right or that everybody will understand it. Um, I would even wager five years from now, you guys will realize, oh wait, the the market is shifting. The trends are changing. Okay, wait, let's. Let's move that direction since that's the right way to do things to do things now. But so at least in the past three and a half years, what the, what challenges did you guys encounter that you think small businesses should also anticipate? Like if they're not as big as LBC, but but they are they are looking into the process of transforming. These are the lessons that you think are key in LBC's experience. That regardless of the size of business, you would learn from this. So I think earlier at the start, you said two things, and that's at the very, very first, don't uh, overestimate what the transformation can do for you. Mm -hmm. Don't underestimate uh, the amount of work and effort that's going to be needed to be put in. You know, you mm -hmm. can't just, like I said, buy something and voila, it works. It's all there. Yeah. There's always going to be some form of configuration. So when people overestimate or underestimate, it's not about just the money. It's, like it's I didn't think I needed to put that much time and effort. I thought I just buy it and it goes. Yeah. Right? And then I get my expectation is it would have taken me from here to the moon right away. Yeah. So <laughs> those two things at the very start to manage it well. And then again, you have to look at what you you what KPI, what metric are you trying to really change? Is it scale? Is it this? Once you know that then you just focus on making sure you can get that done. You're going to have to put time and effort to it. Data integrity is key. You cannot have analytics, you cannot have AI, you cannot have everything if your data integrity is bad because then it turns everything out wrong. So I, I think also sometimes for a brand, they, they do their digital transformation uh, because the objective is to disrupt the, the industry they're in. Uh, I'm not sure that for you guys, disrupting all of your other, because they're not as large as you guys, and you know they're, they're not as well known as you guys, and I doubt that they have become as efficient as you guys. Uh, but so if I, if I were to ask you guys directly, which market is LBC trying to disrupt? Like with your transformation, uh, who, whose tree are you trying to shake? Nobody's. 
honestly, because there's no tree next to mine. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I know I'll probably get killed if people are going to start saying, uh, but it's true. There's nobody close enough to even be compared with, you know, people say, oh, I'll compare you to X, I'll compare you to Y. It's like, hey, you stuck my face. Don't even compare me there. So right. I need branches and I, my branches are what's challenging us. So like a big tree, you still have to chop a few branches and disrupt yourself for it to go to the next level, right? Yeah. So I, we've proven ourselves during this pandemic. We never closed. We, we kept that organization running from March 16 all the way. We never shut down. Wow. Uh, and, and I think th that, that resonates a lot with me, right? Because even, even for us, uh, we didn't shut down. Um, I think in most cases, we allowed everybody to work from home, just like everybody that's listening to us is working from home. But there are a few key people that need to come to the office in order to keep the business going because payroll has to go out, suppliers have to get paid. Uh, and, and all of that jazz. So uh, I think I think that's terrific. There there have been I would say a couple of challenges, like probably more for you guys, know, like that thing that happened in customs or the fear or whatnot. But you guys sort sort of quickly overcame those, and and customers I think appreciate the fact that the business is is steady, it's reliable. Uh, that and the fact that if you're trying to build a community now in so shop. So given everything that's going on for LBC, would you say you guys always read the market correctly? Or, or would you say in retrospect, there, there were things that happened in the market that, that you know, could have been anticipated better or things that you didn't see coming? Yeah, no, we never, we were not perfect, right? We make a lot of mistakes here and there. Uh, our logistics in the Philippines is the, one of the most difficult in the world. Yeah. Uh, with all the islands, with all these challenges, infrastructures, and all of that. If you can perfect uh, logistics in the Philippines, the, what the industry says, you can be a logistics expert anywhere else in the world. It's 10 times easier already. Um, but uh, I think being also 70 years, and another advice, but when we're transforming and the pandemic hit us during this transformation, we had to revert back to the old, no airline. No, so all of a sudden, whole operations had to now go back to our business continuity plan, which was, what did we do 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? And we had to revert back to all those uh, modes, right? Wow. Airlines are flying now, very minimal flights. So we had yeah. to you know, put Roro out, we had to do all of this to keep the business going. We could have easily said, let's just close. That's the easiest thing. But, yeah. you know, SMEs and other customers are dependent on us. So that's, that was one thing we were able to read right because we knew what we did before compared to other startups who started up really now with the online all of a sudden they're like, huh, how do I do things? I don't know. So you only have to have that, that uh, backup. The yeah. other one is uh, on, on being able to look forward or find that gap. We've made, we've made our fair share mistakes trying to focus on certain segments and all of that and we said again it's timing timing they were not ready we launched elbc uh i think it was 1999 oh a wow e -commerce, a full e-commerce place and everything way 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 too early yeah yeah but so we wanted to try and we're like oh they're gonna be ready for it and they were like oh they're not um okay let's Let's take that back a notch a little bit. People were not fully ready, but we had, you could do shopping, you could do little things. So yeah. it, it, it's, it, there's always a right product with the right offering. And then don't forget at the right time, at the time. people yeah. are willing to take it. You're right. You're right. I, I, I agree. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, questions that are, that are coming from the audience because we're coming to the 13 minutes uh, at the top of the hour. Uh, this one's one of the most common questions that that we tend to get. Uh, should when when they assign a budget to to digital, is it should it be tied to progress? Like meaning, if they if they gain more than they anticipated, should they disrupt their budget and pour more into it, or should they be disciplined and keep it at a steady pace? And I think the question that precedes that is, how do you even 
figure out what the budget is. It's, it's, it, this is always a, a recurring question for us. Like even on the first one with, with Donald, this, this got asked. So if they were asking you, uh, how do they figure out, like what is, what's the right way to figure out what the budget is to, to digital either, to digitize either operations or HR or, or marketing? How do they know what resources to spend on that? So again, uh, it's what KPI are you looking at? So when we said mm -hmm. we wanted to do operations and you know increase productivity, so there's there's a way to be able to measure and calculate. If right. I increase my productivity of my people ten percent times you know ten thousand people times this this, I can get this sort of uh, increase in. Then you have your investment. Right. What what period of an ROI are you sort of looking at so some people are aggressive like i said so i said don't overestimate oh i can make this back in six months and we'll be all good mm -hmm. because sometimes it takes a while to fully maximize and execute so it's it's looking at what measure you're trying to really drive and then see some are a bit more complicated like a website ux right oh we want to make the ux but again it's not is it about the ux or is it about conversion you go down yeah. the conversion you can get a measure yeah. And the reason I'm investing in the UX and changing and putting a bot or whatever is because I want conversions. Right. So don't get sidetracked with other measures. Stick to what's the core and you will be able to mathematically compute and say, oh, wow, that will return me five years. If you're okay with it and the platform will last five years, mm -hmm. then you're good. And I guess it also depends on what your perceived longevity of your own brand is, right? Uh, because if you feel that you're a brand that needs to pivot every five years, then go for a shorter ROI period. Uh, but what I always like to tell people is when when your time to achieve your goals is shorter, you tend to be more aggressive, which means you probably invest more. One of the things that you always say, Javi, that, that always resonates with me is it's easy to buy the system. Like, like, who got my own? Like, where does that, like, when you say that, it sounds like it comes from experience. So when you say that, what, what does that mean? Well, I definitely from experience. When we started looking at, you know, certain transformations, marketing and tools, you know, you know CRM uh, platforms, we have social listening tools. And I, I've tried most of them. Because I said, it's the easiest thing is what they sell you this, right, get it. And you're like, <laughs> uh, the, uh, we need, then they start, no, we need customization. I'm like, what do you mean customization? Ah, because the out-of-the-box system you bought doesn't work. Like, yeah. So it's buying is the easiest. It's really now understanding how it's going to be used, where you can put it. Will it really return what you want it to do? Uh, is very, very. So I, I know, and I guess a lot of people here, whether they admit it or not, they know. They've tried it, and then they're like, oh. yeah. That's why they get now scared with the second time. The second time that they have to try and say transform, the last time I tried it, it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. Yeah, you know, I, I think one of the things that, that I really liked in the experience when we were understanding your business is it, it almost felt like a process of being indoctrinated into what LBC's values were and what its core competency was and what the goal of the business was. Uh, how important is it that you indoctrinate your partners, your vendors, your providers into what you do? Well, that's like, you, like you've experienced, we, we don't deal with the partners in silos. Mm -hmm. We have breakout sessions because it's pointless to have everybody all the time there, but there's always that one meeting with all the partners with one goal, mm -hmm. right? It, it's difficult to manage and because sometimes the partners are also like, but I can do that better than that guy at the table and here and there. But you define the roles and you share a common goal. I'm the client, I'm the boss, this is our goal, you're contracted to work on this, you're contracted and we don't have to make the block fit. Right? right. And then you bring everybody with the common values, goals, KPIs, and now you get to maximize everything and now they respect each other like you guys with the other partners we deal with in the beginning it was a very quiet meeting right and then all of a yeah. sudden it's after you break the chain yeah all the also, yeah going. also because everybody's also starting to get to know each other and the people know to give a cue to the right people that are experts in the right fields 
uh, so so that's true, I, and I can attest to that from experience. I, there's a question for you here that, that came in, um, and I think you already addressed it in the earlier conversation, uh, but the question was, is it important that operations, parenthesis, the core, is digitized first? It's, it's not a, uh, a golden rule, but mm -hmm. you, again, what are you selling? So for us, it's the service. Right. That's my product, right? That's my core. So that's, that's where we felt if I'm able to not only increase productivity, but give a better experience or better product to my consumers, then it'll be easier for me to also market and sell. So right. That was the, the the basis of what we decided to go with the uh, with the core. So, knowing your met, I think some of the biggest pieces of advice that we've received is is knowing your metrics, knowing the ROI period that you're investing in, uh, understanding which pillar you you address first. Uh, and I, because the next question I think is is related to that. Uh, so the the question I got, and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to translate it. Uh, where should they be the most careful? Like if, if when they're when they're doing their analytics, when they're doing uh, operational transformation, the transformation of the core product or the service, when they're doing their marketing, where should they be the most careful at in order to avoid the biggest mistakes? Uh, again, so there are there are, you have to look at it. Uh, again, different industries, so different. But I'll try to narrow it down to finding out one the impact to this. So, like for us, if we mess up in operations, we're dead, right? I mean, that would that the, the impact would have been huge. Yeah. Uh, if you mess up on your ERP and you can't get things and your supply and all of that, all of that gets messed up. So there are critical uh, pockets that you need to make sure those ones all attention hands on. If I go to marketing, oh, I, my website, it's not going to make or break or kill. The impact is also controlled and you can pivot. Then yeah. it's not as critical. So you have to define in your processes and everything, what are critical? What are the critical components? And those ones are where you have to really make sure it's done, like I said, properly. It's done in a controlled fashion. Don't do it like we don't do transformations or big changes during peak season. Yeah. So we yeah, wait for definitely. the lower part of the month and then, okay, that's when we can affect the exchange the yeah. because one mistake there means thousands of customers already affected, right? Yeah. So I remember one of the things that you always harp on whenever we meet is you always talk about the KPI is always data, uh, measurability is the key, and then you know whenever we we work on progress, you you always say na hindi pa din puro kwento, right? It has to be about KPIs. It has to be it has to be efficient, on time, on budget, and you don't you can't tell that if if it's not driven if it's not driven by the data. You can't, you can't have meetings with no numbers. Right. You have to have the numbers and you have to say if you do better than last week, better than last month, better than last year, you know, or but you have to have a number. Otherwise, puro laway lang, right? You can just keep going on and going on yeah. and going on. Javi, there's another question for you uh, here. It's uh, the, the Soul Shop program. How do you guys differentiate yourself? From the from the channels that Watson's Lazada uh, and Shopee offer, I think that's a great question. No, and I think so. If I'm going to guess the motivation of the question, do I get better ROI working with SoShop than paying 15% commission to Shopee, Lazada, Watson's? But they're all our partners, by the way. So <laughs> we're not competing, uh, and we're not going to be competing with the platforms. Uh, we provide them the service. They have a marketplace, all of that. Like I said, ours is, it's a community and it's a tool. You're a social seller. You're an entrepreneur. You want to sell your own product. This is another channel for you to go through. We, we don't charge commissions. I think ours is, we want your deliveries, right? That's right. our business. So our business is not on the ads and the marketplace and all that. Our business is, give me your 
transactions to deliver right. and grow and, and hopefully make you grow by giving you another output of a community. Right. And on the side, I will probably solve some of your e com your more tedious e commerce collection C O D C O P problems on the on the way. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought that was a good question and I think that that really clarifies it in, in my mind that so shop is another anyway, social, community. But the social program is still just going to launch. So oh, you guys yeah. who are listening about all of this might be searching the web and all of that. <laughs> Not gonna see Shop there yet. Uh, wait till October 15, and then we will be coming out with a big program on on LDC Social and what it can do for everybody. Yeah. We have some teasers on the community page coming soon and all of that, but uh, you'll see the full effects and what it can provide for you and your uh, your products and services uh, that you want to market to, tied straight to a distributor, logistics provider that can reach the market you want to reach. Yeah, and I think with with that, uh, we've got about a few more questions, but we're not going to have time to, to do it because we're reaching the top of the hour. Uh, but it was it was a lot to unpack. I think I want to remind everybody, we, we record these sessions and then we publish them on Facebook. We, we publish them on, on YouTube. So if you guys want to go back, uh, I have actually rewatched the, the previous ones because when you're having the conversation, uh, I realize I miss things versus... When I rewatch it, and I'll, I'll realize, oh, okay, wait. When I when he was saying that, that's not what I was thinking. But now that I'm just watching it, it, it makes more sense. So for those of you that want to go back to these conversations, uh, we'll send you guys the the link. I want you all to, to help me thank Javi for his time. Javi, thank you very much. I was really looking forward to doing this with you for for a while. I'm glad you could give us a, an hour of your time. Um, and for everybody, I hope this was this was super worth it. Any parting words for for the people in the crowd, Javi? Uh, I, you know, it might be cliche, whatever. Follow your dreams, stick to your passion, commit what you want to commit, and and focus. Yeah, the pandemic is not a a life killer. Yeah, per se, but. If you can innovate uh, and say there's a lot of opportunity out there, so yeah. let's not make this situation like such a big uh, downer. We should look at it on the half, the glass half full. Yeah, there's still a lot out there for everybody. So just like I said, for the social sellers, entrepreneurs, stick to your passion, stick to your dreams. You're the ones who are changing the world. Yeah, I I agree, and I think great words to end the session with. With that, I'll thank, I'll thank everybody for investing another hour of their time. Join us again. Thank um, you. Thank you. Oh, it was our pleasure. This was such a great convo. I, I actually get to interact with you a lot, so I think I'm the most fortunate person in the room. Uh, and hopefully, you know, sooner than later, we all get to see each other again. Thank you for everybody that invested their, their afternoon. Join us on November 4. We've got Can Can Ramos talking to us about social media and its role in the current situation. So I hope you join us again. Javi, again, thank you. Everybody else, thank you. Have a great afternoon ahead. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.